is what I look at my daughter's eyes. Now there's something. Y'all gonna get there. Because how many y'all think y'all look good? What? Where's your neck? Because I know I'm from. I've always been from. Right? I know I'm from when I look in the mirror. Right? I look fine on my bad days. I look fine when I wake up, when I go to sleep, if I just get done working out, if I dress up. You look fine, right? When I need to shape, whatever the case may be. Right? For all that, all that don't matter. All that don't matter. Because it all goes away. I know when I wake up in the morning and I look at my daughter's eyes. Hopefully none of y'all are here. You can again if you don't have children. But if you do, if your daughters, it means something. But my language query is, God has a crazy humor. God has a crazy humor. So you can <coughs> tell me that I can get any woman that I want. That I couldn't cheat on my girlfriend who's now my wife. That I couldn't, and it, it became a group, it became a part of who I was. Because I had no character. I had no character, no integrity. So God blessed me with a daughter. Now you know what that means when she turns 14, 15. I might catch another charge. Right? I, might, uh, I might add to that rap sheet. Right? I know when I look at my daughter's eyes, what my purpose is in life. There's something about daddy's little girl. It changes as a man. When you have to raise a young woman in this world, and you know all the done, you done do that you done did, you know. You know. Potential is what are you good at. Promise is what are you doing to fulfill and activate that potential and purpose is why you I'm going to leave you with these last four things because this is going to be an ongoing conversation. Hopefully y'all see me again. Education. Getting an education, you have to learn how to do something. Read, write, paint a wall, fix cars, catch a rat. You gotta be able to do something. I just read a report. I just read a report. How many of you know what HBCUs are? What that stands for? What? Impressive, impressive. Historically black college and university, right? So before when there was no other opportunity for us, we went to HBCU. Right? I, I graduated from the first HBCU. Right? Eight, only okay, eight percent of the incoming freshman students this past year were college ready. Only eight percent. Let me tell you why that's so important. That means only eight percent of our college freshmen that went into school, into college, were ready. That means 92 percent would take your remedial classes or non-credit various classes. Now there's a couple things about that. One, you're paying for a course and you don't get credit. You're just giving the university your money. But more importantly, what that's talking about high schools is that when you graduate high school, you don't have the skill set. The diploma doesn't mean anything because you don't have the skills. The average black student who graduated high school reads on the ninth grade level. Real talk. And it's not about memory, because y'all can probably memorize, the, uh, what's your call? The, the whole new Kanye Jay-Z album. Well, that's <laughs> but memory is not the problem. We're not taking the time. Not taking the time. So education has got to be considered. It has to give you motivation to do something with the skills. Inspiration. You have to be able to want to do something with your skills. And part of But what happened when beating the odds weren't enough? What happened when beating the odds are not enough? And that's what you're asking, and that's what I'm, I'm trying to answer. The motivation is, is once you dedicate yourself to doing what's right, good comes from good, bad comes from bad. It's called karma, baby. When I change my life around, when I make that first step, and all major religions, whether you're a Christian, when you're a Muslim, whether you're a, a, a Buddhist, we, they all talk about karma. In Islam, in Malcolm X, the about Malcolm X, he says, if you take one step towards the law, he takes two steps for you. In Christian, it says, how do you know you're doing what's right? Because it's hard to do. If I drop 
500. And I don't know what falls out of my pocket. That's the easy thing to do. It's a lot. Pick it up and do what? That's the easy thing to do. No, real talk. No, listen up. That's real talk. And I didn't believe it when I was your age. I didn't believe it when I was in my twenties. But I live it now. If you do what's right, you never have to apologize. So what happened was, if you look at me, when I walked out of jail on August 9th of 96, I went to college nine days later. Nine days later. I got out on a Friday, didn't have a room, didn't have tuition, nothing. But I knew I got accepted to college. That's all I knew. Didn't know how I was going to pay for it, didn't know how I was going to, uh, how I was going to uh, get there, didn't know where I was going to stay. But I knew I was going to college. I got out Friday morning, went from Smyrna in southern Delaware, took the court bus, because I had no family that would come pick me up, all the way up to Wilmington. Now, I was indigent. Anyone impressed with my team? That's 80 people, indigent, for the Zenith. So you got no money. And this means you poor. So in Delaware, they give you $50 if you're indigent when you leave prison. That's what that is, bro. What's up, bro? And not Jake. I'm Derek Richards from John Adams, and I want to know, after your father died, why did you get kicked out of school? Which time? It's five schools, remember? First one. Home with a drug conviction. They don't tell you that on the application, but you can't get it. They won't give you federal money for the drug conviction. Question back here. We'll go back here. I think it's almost like a natural progression in prison. Like, in Islam is that, is that revolutionary religion at first. And the, the brother I told you about, the brother I told you about who took me under his wing. Because, like, I'm small, right? Like, I'm not real big. Like, y'all are bigger than me. And we already established for the, for the uh, you know, for the women and then as men talking to men that I'm very attractive, right? So what do you think it happened to me in prison? <laughs> what do you feel about? What do you think it happened to me in prison? <laughs> God takes care of baby and food and nurse. Baby and food is a kid, right? Yeah. Nurse is my turn. Nurse is my turn. So what happened was, so what happened was, the, the, old, the, uh, the older brother who was looking out after me, right? He helped me study Islam. And mom was like, real curly. <laughs> So the two things. So when the judge went and let me, so when I found out the news that my mother had passed away, right? So she slipped into the coma, passed away. So the judge, I mean, when I came back, there was an old CEO. Everyone knows CEO, right? Fresh off. Instead of locking you back up, this is this is an older brother too, fresh off. Just let me walk around. We were all locked out because all the CEOs had called out that day. You know what I mean? So he just let me walk around. So I was very traumatized. And let me tell you this. And it's probably not all the witness coordinators or adults can attest to. We all, we all have junk with us. We all have baggage. Because we're all products of our childhood. You never get past your childhood. You learn how to manage and deal with your childhood experience. You never get past it. I didn't start dealing with grief. And grief is power. I didn't start dealing with grief until I was about 31. When I had my, ch when I had my children. Because I knew I couldn't pass that on to them. Because even what... Um, I don't know if you are from the and my question is, where do you find me when you do it for the Become what I am? Okay. Um, so when I couldn't, so around my junior year in college, when, when my professor sat me down and told me that even if you get a uh, law degree, you can't practice law, I started thinking about teaching. Now here's, now here's the thing about, remember what we said, and we can take something, that good comes from good, bad comes from bad, right? So don't you think it's just as equally as hard to teach with a felony on your record? Right? Now my felony was there, that I got my job in Baltimore City teaching. He spoke to the school board on my behalf and told them that he believed in me to give me a job. So I knew I always wanted to get back to young people. That's what inspired me to do. Just give it back to you. We're going to go there, then here, then there. Uh-huh.
Un instead of getting a 10 year sentence, they jumped on 10 years probation. So the, they offered, I would have taken the three. They were offered 10 years. Do three years, either 10 years probation or three years locked up, right? I would have taken the three years locked up. Because you know what the success rate is doing 10 years on probation? And then you get it all back. So you get a 10 year deferred sentence. If you, they can violate you for driving on a suspended license. They can violate. <coughs> Come on, bro. I want to know who you can have a That's a deep question. You said I got out of prison August 9th of 96 and I went to I went to uh, college August 18th. So that 90 days. So I got out on a Friday. I went to Drew Mall Place, right? But then because I got accepted to prison uh, when I was incarcerated, uh, I didn't I couldn't have an opportunity to do financial aid. Listen up. I didn't have a chance to do financial aid, nor did I have a chance to get my house. So one of the challenges with HBCUs is using it as a waiting list for housing. Because they don't have all the same housing. So for nine days, I was hustling to try to get housing, and I was trying to get uh, tuition. Here again, let me give you another example of how God takes care of babies and food and news. Huh? I didn't have any money. Right? So after taking out all the loans I could, I was still $7,000 short. $7,000. I went to the financial aid office and said, is there anything else you can give me? They said, no. You've taken out the max of all your loans. Your grade is so low, you couldn't qualify for, you can't qualify for a scholarship. And I said, I don't know what I'll do. I can't go to school. When I got back to the French house where I was staying, there was a message on my answer. The, the financial aid director went to an alum, and the alum donated $7,000. Oh, this is the cop, this is, this is, this is one of your people. He's asking the question. 